and after an impressive win against Scotland, England now travel to a green and pleasant land. But watch out, because the hosts are in a jubilant mood too. And England have seen some of their dreams go up in smoke here before. With over 51,000 men in green here, the men in white face an almighty battle, but one they know is possible to win. Welcome to Dublin. Welcome to O2 Inside Live. Coming up, teammates, player cam, team behind the team. But first, Brad Barrett and Alex Good analyse the Calcutta Cup win over Scotland. The weather played into the, the quick ball game. The ball was dry, so we were able to shift it, able to offload out the tackle and speed up the, the tempo. Obviously, if you go to Ireland and the conditions are slightly different, we will look to be tighter, more direct. On the day, I think we, we forced a, a lot of offloads. Most came off, obviously some don't come off, so you need to obviously get those percentages as high as you can. Just here showing that everyone's carrying hard and Jeff does well, gets through. And again, just get that ball moving quickly. And and that's what the forwards did all day. Yeah, obviously Joe Myler puts uh, Joe Launch into a nice bit of space. Benny uh, Wohan does a great clean out there, that's what you want when you're 10 steps up. Ashley obviously gets the opportunity when the try line's there, he's going to go and uh, finish as well and scores a good try. A choke tackle obviously is kind of the opposite to what we try to do. We try to get people on the deck, they pretend to try to hold the guy up and prevent him from going forward. Through that, it obviously causes a maul, and when it collapses, eventually the players don't have to roll away, so it's going to be very difficult for the attacking team to get it back. The other key for us is when you're on the ball carrier, when you feel yourself losing momentum or being held up, it's that, as Brad said, ripping that shoulder, really trying to you know, wrestle yourself free and get to ground and place that ball, knowing that your players will be there and not sort of waiting around for that second or two. It's obviously a tactic that's worked for them very well, and it's something we'll do a lot of work on this week. David Strettle focuses player cam. DC's one of the best looking men yes. in the squad, hands down. The only problem is one tenth the normal size of a man. <laughs> this and is zoomed into the max, it can be. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is wide angle. Angle. this is a <laughs> wide angle lens and he's on a booster seat. Like, he is genuinely the best looking man, but all women go, oh, I really want some of his tall, oh. dark hands. <laughs> Not small, oh, freaky up. hands, but really good looking. <laughs> Never heard Bird turn around and go, I want, blue, I want blonde, blue eyed, gangly sort of looking chap. Never happens, it, don't Teammates. Have you got the time? Stand up, Dave. Yes. The better chicken, actually. Isn't it? Yeah. Let's go. Be very his beard's, careful. His beard's better than mine. I'm trying to I'm trying to emulate Joe's beard at the moment. I said to Mrs. at New Year's Eve, I said, pick a number between one and 365. And she was like, what are you on about? All right, 88. I said, 88 days to go then, so beard for 88 days. <laughs> Having to spend a week with Mike Brown probably, um, yeah. he's always moaning and Word. he doesn't get the ball past to him enough, food's cold or his bed's not big enough, you know, he's a, he's a whinger. You do a good trick in the shower, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You can well, sing, you well, can I'd sing really well. I'd sing. You can sing. Oh, God. Come on. Okay. He's out. <laughs> He's out. Okay. Lean on me. That's it, done. He's now it. Cheers, lads. In today's Team Behind the Team, we meet England's team communications manager, Dave Barton. I look after all the media operation for the senior England team. Um, so whether that's the press coming down to interview the players, or whether that's briefings with Stuart Lancaster, player columns, uh, everything to do with any interaction the players have or the squad have with the press, that's my role. Probably the busiest day of the week is team announcement day, so that's usually Thursday. Day usually starts about half five in the morning, uh, when I get up and read all the press. In Six Nations a week, it tends to run to about 120, 130 pages worth of newspapers. I create a file, which I then send to all the coaches, um, so they, they've got an idea about you know, what the perception is in the press. I speak to Dave more than I speak to some of the players. Um, you know, it's, uh, no, he's pretty busy and uh, it's a 24-7 job really. All four coaches are very good actually. Um, you know, Stuart obviously takes the bulk of it as head coach. I'm very lucky in that regard in having four very good spokespeople. 
Hey, Owen. I can't see you. Apparently, you got voted uh, moment of the match. <laughs> so, you get this? No, cheers. Thanks uh, a lot. You've got to keep all week. Okay. Cheers. No worries. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> That's all we have time for, but we'll see you again next week on O2 Inside Line. Bye-bye.